um, I have another cuff, which is what I used to make this. It was so simple I couldn't even I remember I had pulled um, these cuffs off of another coat just to have a closer look at. Huh. Okie doke. Anyways, so, so what I'll do here is I'm going to go ahead and seam rip the rest of the sleeve off of the hole the cuff. here too so that when we're finished sewing the ends we'll be able to pull it inside out. Oh the squealing in back? Sorry, that's my kids. Just try to block it out. Alright. They're watching anime. That's my bet. They never seem to be happy with the ending, yet they continue to watch. I, um, the cuff, when it was made, had this other thin fabric put inside to give it some shape and stiffness. So, which is what I was going to do if I'd made the tie from scratch. Or, you know, with that netting stuff that I showed you earlier. And I'll just keep pushing it through so we're inside out. So we've got the middle here. We pull this down. Loop it in back. Like this and then run it under as right, a straight I ran ahead and shortened this. Did a little stitch. Flip it inside out so now we have a finished edge. You know, which we do not have on mine. I could probably pull that through and switch it out and then it will quit bugging me. Hmm. Wow, there's an idea. Okay. Uh, we sewed this back up just so that it's not uh, open or raw. And let's see if we can fit this through that little bitty opening. I think I like sewing it on as opposed to pulling it through. No, no. If you just sit and manipulate the fabric a little bit, there you go. Gabby is tolerating me again. I've got the wrong side of the ribbon showing <laughs> so that I can mark it and then she'll have a cotton shirt on so we'll leave for a little bit of room there. And I'd like to put a hem right there and right Are here. Are you doing a needle? Yeah, no needles. See, she, she knows that I really have to stay away from the sharps. Okay. Now I can zigzag this or not. I'm cutting it really close to the hem. I have some fray check liquid I can rub on there. You know, it's really your preference at this point. Okay. So, now I will take one of my ties. Here is the plan. Velcro would be really good too. Now I'm going to use a hook and eye on Gabby because I know exactly you know, I have her here to go ahead and make sure I get it exact. It also comes down here. He's got like two little the section or dish. Um, I would like the top of it to be about as wide as this original um, ribbon is here on the one tie. 
So I'm using my other tie just because it is here. And I'm thinking it's going to go about like this. Oh, I should have a pencil that's sharper than this. Okay. So I'll start this with that width. Curves a little, but not at a severe angle. All right. So I want to cut two of those. And that white stuff that we have on the inside of these, or something like this, um, I'm going to put on the inside just to give it a little bit of so we'll body. Cut some extra for seam allowance. You know, since we reused or repurposed the cuff on the jacket, you know, I didn't have to worry about that. But that was important at the fabric store. They said if I make the if I do make the tie from scratch, then to make sure that I make it at the diagonal. Okay, so this, I'm not so sure that it needs to actually be that precise because these are going to just hang straight down. Okay. Uh, let's see, since I ran out of that ribbon, go ahead and just straight stitch this, turn it inside out, and then we'll have another band to go around the neck. And I'll put a piece of elastic on that as I go, so that will just sort of evolve. And then I also needed to cut out this for each side of the tie, so we just need two pieces here. And I will want to put these, let's see, in between, right? No. It goes on the wrong side. So when I tuck it in, side out or outside in, it will go... Ooh, boy, this stuff is stubborn, isn't it? Go like that. Okay. Probably be easier to tuck back through as a smaller piece anyways. I'll leave the top open so that I can tuck it inside out. And that part will be hidden um, underneath the bulk of the tie anyways. I wanted to go over a few things since we've done the bow tie and different methods and I thought I'd make it one way and we ended up doing another so I thought I'd revamp here. Okay, so we used the satiny stuff um, for the neckband and to make the part of the tie that hangs down like so okay now um, what I did on these little pieces for the second tie I didn't show you in the f first one so I went ahead and I sewed two more now I've got another tie anyways, so what the heck. Okay, on here, the corners look fine, okay, but um, it depends on what kind of fabric you're working with. You might have something that's not as forgiving. Well, it's a little stiff. And then I'm just going to make these little tiny snips, little cuts around the corner. So when you tuck it right side out, and you're trying to get the shape that you want, it'll be a little bit easier if you do that. Then you tuck them right side out, and here you go. You've got the two pieces that will go behind the tie, like so, before I sew the hook and eye on and, you know, any elastic or whatnot. I really think Velcro is a good idea. It does kind of snag the hair sometimes, but that gives you a lot of flexibility for the size of the neck if you're going to, you know, put it on a child or an adult. Makes it much more versatile. I don't like working with Velcro for myself if I don't have to. I, you know, I know the size that I need to have for me and my daughters. So the hook and eye is going to work just fine. Um, and the Velcro, I just have a hard time working with even the thinner stuff um, because it is still so thick. 
But if you're going to want to make something and then put it up for sale, I would go, I would take the time to go ahead and use the Velcro instead. Alright, now we will put these, I will tuck this in like that. Putting the elastic on the neck band. Okay, so I've placed the, whatever you call these, uh, the rest of the tie, uh, you know, where we want it aesthetically. So it doesn't move around too much while I'm straight, you know, doing a little hand stitch here. And then that's it. We're just uh, sewing this on either side of the knot. And it will look like this when we are finished. Pretty cool. This is Cleo. Want to see cat fur? Catherine's cat. Want to see the cat fur? This is something that you don't want someone doing while you're working on black. Black. Oh, so Ready? many <laughs> shades of black. Wow. Oh, look at an explosion of colors! <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. Okay, the bow tie with the Alois Trancy costume. And then we made the extra one too just because we thought, why not? Needed the practice. And we did a few things different on each one anyways in the tutorial. And, oh, yeah, if my face is like turning lobster red, it's because I made this one a little tight. 